I'd say I've had no formal training, no formal part two training. No matter how prepared you are, or unprepared, or how strong you think you are, there's always the calm before the storm. Ready for this? You ready for this? Oh yeah. I've put you on the wrong side of the road as well. Do you yeah. like that? I love it, mate. I'm here with Ben. Ben has come all the way from Stoke-on-Trent to, to do a part two mock, haven't you? I have. Man. Nice Starstruck. To, nice to meet you, mate. Can you read the number plate on that grey car up there? This one here? The grey one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, DA20HGG. Have you got your license yeah, with I have you? got my license with me. Yes, I do. Oh, that's an old picture. I know. <laughs> Just as bad as yours over there. <laughs> that picture's awful. You, can you see that one? Yeah. That is terrible. <laughs> That is terrible. That's definitely you, isn't it? Yeah, That's definitely you. with her. Tell us a little bit about your driver training. What have you done uh, in preparation for this? I'd say I've had no formal training, no formal part two training. I'm a field service engineer, so I've been out and about on the road and doing all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. You do a lot of driving. I do, yeah. In your job. Yes. Yeah. And then my... Uh, my... Everybody comes to me. They've done no training. Well, I'm with a provider who won't give me training until my test is booked. Who's your number one trainer? Number one trainer in our... Who's your number one trainer? In terms of... I love asking this question. Who's your number one trainer? You're training to become a driving instructor. Yeah, me. me. It is you, isn't it? Me. If you're your number one trainer, yeah. and yet your number one trainer is only going to get about a week's worth of practice in prior to doing the part two, is that enough? No. So what do you think would be a good idea to do with your provider? Ask for extra lessons and ask for extra stuff, which I have done. I have done and they've... There is no availability until May with anybody in my area. So I have seeked driving lessons from a different provider. Okay. With a friend. Okay. So shout out to Emily. Okay. <laughs> Great yeah. Emily. They've literally said, book your test and we will put you on the weekend before your test and then you'll go straight into it on the Monday. Yeah. I'm just like, ah, well that doesn't sound good to me. Look, there, there is a wealth of information out there you can use, you obviously got all the videos, yeah. uh, but you definitely need to do some training. You need yeah. to be assessed as well. Yeah. So it's really good watching the videos, but you need some form of an assessment too. So that's yeah. really important. Okay, do you know what a part two entails? Yes. So it's going to be about an hour's driving, um, minimum of six faults, uh, driver faults, any serious faults is an instant fail. At all times, I like to follow the road ahead, unless I tell you to turn left or right. Yeah or unless road signs indicate otherwise. If I need you to turn, I will tell you in good time. Okay. Two reversing manoeuvres. Yeah. Possibly an emergency stop. Tell me how you would check that your brake lights were working properly. So you would either get somebody who's in the vehicle, so such as yourself, go and check the brake lights for me, or if you're on your own, drive up to a wall or something with a reflective surface, apply the brakes, look in the rear mirror, see that they're working. I like that. How would you check that your headlights and taillights were working properly? So you'd flip them on using the controls, go out, walk around the car, check that they're all on, and that's how you would do that. Okay, good. And where would you get the information for the recommended tire pressures, and how would you check them? So it's in the door arch here. So you open the door, it's down in the on the metal in here, that will tell you what the recommended pressures are. Then you can go out, check with a gauge, or anything like that. So you can get a manual gauge or an automatic gauge, anything like that, and that'll tell you what the pressures are, and you just match them up with the thing in the door. Any more information? To check the tire pressures. You can have a look in the car as well. You can have a look on the automatic as well. It's oh, always a horrible thing. question, that, isn't yeah. it? When you've, asked the, <laughs> you've answered it, and it's yeah. like, hang on a minute, have I missed something? If you are a learner driver and you are watching this content, you can get away with quite a lot when it comes to your show me, tell me questions. When you are a PDI in training, not so much. No. Nope. And why do you reckon that is? Because we are going to be training the trainer. And your information pretty much has been bang on. I like it. There's a couple of things I would have added in. So, for example, when you're checking your brake lights, I would switch my engine on. Or ah, I put my ignition on. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Uh, same with the headlights and tail lights, but that's less important. How many tyres you got? Four. That's true. Or five with the spare. Do you check them when they're hot or they're cold? So we check them in the cold. And, and yeah. don't forget to refit the the dust cap. Yeah. That's it. If you are interested in doing a mock test on the channel, then I'll put my Instagram down here. Send me a DM. Follow me. Send me a DM, and then we'll talk about it. And like, comment, and subscribe. All that jazz. Hit that button. <laughs> Hit that button. Okay, so when we see you next, we'll be starting the test. Start your engine for me, please. So whenever you are ready, drive on. Ben does good all-round obs as he moves away from the side of the road here, but on this first junction, he makes a mistake. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this next road on the right, just here, just past that van. 
As I've just said, the junction is just beyond this white van and visibility is quite poor, but he cuts across the junction on the wrong side of the road. This would be a serious fault for turning right. And if you could just pull up on the left just before that grey car. Yeah. He checks mirrors well and signals in good time for this pull up on the left. Just leave enough room for you to be able to move away. Yeah. Brilliant. Drive on when you're ready. And then we're just going to follow the road around, okay? Mm -hmm. Ben does look all the way around the car, but I'd prefer his right shoulder check to be his final. Sorry, my knee there, buddy. No, it's okay. And then at the end of the road here, turn right for me, please. Again, his mirrors and signal are well-timed and he positions well on this junction. He then takes his time and does effective observation. Ben is in a 20 zone and he does pick up his speed to around 22 miles an hour, but then drops it straight back down again. So in this case, it's not noteworthy. And then after he exits the 20 zone, when he goes to gear three, he accidentally gets gear five. He does control it and there isn't a major issue and then realizes and changes back to second. But it is the wrong gear. His speed through this section is a fraction too high, especially as it gets a bit tight, but he controls it. At the roundabout turn right for me, please. But his mirrors and signal work is tight and he again performs well at this mini roundabout. Shortly, we're approaching his first reverse manoeuvre, the reverse Bay Park, and he makes a mistake. And then you're going to take this next road on the left, which is just into the car park here. But, yep. but again, his mirror work is bang on. And then follow the road round to the left. Here, I know please. that the pressure in the part two is to get the manoeuvre done first time, but if you don't think you're in, check it and correct it. It's better to pick up a driver fault than a serious. And then what I'd like you to do, if we can find somewhere, anywhere you like, anywhere in the car park, yep. I'd like you to do a reverse bay park. Okay. Finishing off, obviously, in between the lines. Ben chooses to swing out instead of using the reference point method, and this is just fine. Just be careful. Try not to overhang the bay's opposite. In this case, I'm going to put this as not noteworthy. His observations are generally quite good, but he does start moving the car before checking around the vehicle properly. This could pick up a driver fault for observation. He then completes the rest of the maneuver in one move. Yep. You done? Yeah. Brilliant. Just give me a second. Okay. God, these lines are useless, aren't they? Yeah. Just give me one second. Let's go to double check. The examiner okay. can check if they think that you're not quite in the lines. I know you're going to say. And it doesn't look like he is from my side. Unfortunately, Ben is not completely in the bay. breath. Take a breath. I want yeah. you to relax a little bit, okay? The likelihood of you messing up a mock is incredibly high. And also on the basis you've had no training, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. This is a massive learning experience for you. So what you do is, if you feel that you've made a mistake, what I suggest you do, certainly in a mock, right? And even on the real thing, I would do this, yes? Even if I felt like I'd messed up the real one, I'd want to make sure that the rest of it was as good as it possibly could be so that mm -hmm. I knew exactly where I was. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sounds good to me. Keep your head on in the right in the right place. Yeah, yeah. Okay, whenever you are ready, drive on. Whenever you make a mistake, it could be incredibly difficult to remain focused. But remember, this is a mock, and a mock you're supposed to squeeze as much out of as possible. And like I said, he's done no training. 
As we come round the bend, he then waits for a learner driver to finish its manoeuvre, and he drops his hands from the steering wheel. We are stationary, so technically it's not a major issue, but I wouldn't expect a PDI in training to relinquish complete control of the steering wheel. Even if the car has stop-start technology, the engine is still technically live. The other thing that he does is even if he's in neutral, he keeps his foot on the clutch. This, long term, is just going to wear it out. So if you stick it in neutral, rest the clutch. We eventually get moving and make our way to the exit of the car park. Okay, so at the end of the road, turn left for me, please. The next few junctions he does well. His mirrors and signal are well-timed, his observations are good, and the vehicle is under good control. And then at the roundabout, you're going to follow the road ahead. Potholes and Stoke here. <laughs> I'll be coming to Stoke at some point soon. Josh? Look forward to it. Game some OKs, Josh. <laughs> Big shout out to Josh, the driving instructor here. <laughs> at the roundabout, turn left. His timing of signal here is a little bit late, but it's not an issue. There's nobody to impact. And then we're going to take the next road on the left, which is just around the bend. Okay. And then again on this junction, he does well. A little further up the road, we pull up on the left to start the independent drive. Very nice. Okay, so we're now going to start the independent drive. You're going to follow the sat nav for a period of approximately 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you will uh, arrive at your destination at 11.48 a.m. Thank you, AI. Uh, if you don't know where you're going, yeah. please ask. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Whenever you are ready. Mm -hmm. It's a good move away from the side of the road. At the end of the road, turn right, then go left on the roundabout, and take the first exit. Ben is approaching the Mill Hill Circus in which he's going to be turning left, and as he gets to the end of this junction, he just gets way too close to the vehicle in front. This would not be looked well upon on a part two, so this is a driver fault for clearance. Turn right, then go left on the roundabout, and take the first exit. When getting too close to the vehicle in front like this, you just simply don't have an escape route. And then after this short pause at this junction, we're turning left on the Mill Hill Circus, and then approaching the apex corner, following the road ahead. On the apex corner roundabout, he makes a mistake. He changes lanes without realizing it, corrects it in the end, but the mistake is too big to ignore. But before we get to that, he demonstrates his first issue with following distance by following a little bit too closely to the vehicle in front. In this case, it is marginal, but he's within the two seconds and it's all the way up to the roundabout. This is his first driver fault for following distance. After 400 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. At the apex corner, he can take either the left lane or the second from the left, and he chooses the second from the left. But when he enters the roundabout, he crosses over to second from the right. You can see this in the road markings. He should be following the A41. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. He doesn't interfere with anybody. There is a vehicle in the right-hand lane. It's just his complete lack of awareness of what he's doing. So this is a serious fault for lane discipline. This last minute lane change is also not great, but he gets away with it as he impacts no one. Ben then correctly moves back to the left-hand lane and then picks up his speed nicely. A little further up the road, we're stopped at a set of traffic lights and I ask him whether he experiences roundabouts like that where he comes from. But before that, he has a slight rollback in traffic.
Do you have roundabouts like that in Stoke? Um, not really. Not in that kind of way. We do, but you know what I mean. We only have a dual carriageways. Um, we literally have two main. We have a dual carriageway, main roundabout to the motorway, other side, dual carriageway, main one to the roundabout. That's it. It's a different yeah, style of less. driving, isn't different it? Different style of driving, yeah. yeah. Especially in these, <coughs> in these built-up areas. He does currently have a safe fish gap, and then a vehicle pulls in front of him should be falling back to create a little bit more space. He's again less than two seconds all the way up to the roundabout. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the second exit. He doesn't pay full attention to the route direction and puts his left signal on when he's taking the second exit. Go left on the roundabout and take the second exit. He does realise in time and cancels it so in this case, I'm going to put it as not noteworthy. It's a confusing one now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Confusing. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Right on the roundabout and yes. take the third exit. <laughs> he judged that well, didn't he? He did. Very well. <laughs> this roundabout, again, he manages well. And I have to say, it is really impressive. His basics, his mirrors and signals are just bang on. And then he picks up his speed nicely in this 40 zone. After 400 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit. Cross the roundabout and take the first exit. On this roundabout, he slows and makes sure it's clear before proceeding. But at the next large roundabout, he kind of rushes in when he shouldn't. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout <coughs> and take the first exit. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. He just takes a small risk. There's a lorry on the roundabout and he chooses to emerge before he's fully sure where the lorry might go. It's just a little bit risky and a little bit unnecessary. It's okay to pause if you're not 100% sure. He's now entered national speed limit and he picks up his speed nicely. After 500 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. At this roundabout, he does well. He picks the correct lane and then keeps reasonably good lane discipline and then does his mirrors and signal to exit in good time. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. He then again demonstrates his issue with following distance by getting a little bit too close to this Tesco's truck ahead. He does drop back and then drops within the two seconds and then drops back again, but he should be further back to make sure it's safe. We now follow this truck for quite a while and all the while he's in and out of the following distance of two seconds. So this is going to be another driver fault for following distance. After 400 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, then keep left. At this roundabout, he gets a little bit frustrated with the slow moving traffic, so he goes to overtake. He can pass on the right and follow the road ahead in the right hand lane, but he's also going to be turning left shortly afterwards. This is a little bit of poor planning. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit, then keep left. He's now in slight competition with this middle lane. After 400 yards, keep left, then Go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. 
He then, of course, looks to move back to the left-hand lane. It's just a little bit messy. I'm going to say he just about gets away with it, but it could be considered a driver fault for poor awareness and planning. Keep left, then go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. On this next roundabout, he again makes a mistake. He gets his lanes confused, sticking to the right-hand side. After 200 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. And then when he goes to exit, he's got to cut across a couple of lanes. Go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. He then almost gets caught out by this amber light, but I think in this instance, he just about gets away with it. He also doesn't apply a right turn signal. Although that usually is a requirement, I think on roundabouts like this, it's less confusing. There are plenty of road markings to tell him where he should be positioned, but he ignores all of them and sticks to the right hand lane. He still has technically plenty of time to start moving across but he just doesn't. Take the exit, then take the motorway. He's now got a bit of a mammoth task to get across, and really at this point here, he should decide to now go in a different direction, but he doesn't. He checks mirrors, signals, and moves across. This by rights could easily be a serious fault, and I think most instructors would probably give it as such, but because he didn't interfere with anybody, this is just a driver fault for awareness and planning. I think I was quite lenient. Yards, you have reached your destination on your left. Ben is now heading back south on the M1. His first thought is to make progress, but when he goes to overtake this truck, he pulls out in front of an oncoming vehicle, making it slow right down. Your destination on your left. At these sort of speeds, that carries way too much risk, so this is a serious fault for judgment overtake. Once he's past this truck, however, he correctly moves back to the left-hand lane. Okay, so I'll be directing you as normal. Okay. Okay, so we're going to be on the, the motorway for just a little bit longer. Okay. I'll let you know when we're coming off. Okay, thank you. Overall, Ben has a good progress drive on the motorway. He's hitting the speed limit and overtaking when is necessary. And even though it may seem like he's holding the middle lane for quite a while, he is catching this white van and therefore overtaking. Okay, so we're going to be coming off at the next exit. Okay. We're now going to be heading back to the A41 towards Edgware, which he signals in good time for the exit. He then reduces speed nicely for this sharp bend. A little further up the road, we're following the road ahead at a roundabout. He's a little bit hesitant, but it doesn't interfere with anybody. At the roundabout, we're going to take the first exit. Okay. The left lane follows the road ahead without the need to give way. He notices this a little bit late, but it doesn't interfere with anybody. And then at the second set of traffic lights, which is about 600 yards, we're going to turn right. Okay. He then plans well for this right turn, moving nice and early into the right-hand lane. Turn right here. At the second set. Second set. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I might have got the distance slightly wrong there. It might be about 800 yards. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's fine. We all make mistakes sometimes. He then checks mirrors and signals in good time for this right turn. A little further up the road, he approaches a meeting situation with a learner driver, and I feel he could have done better there. But just before that, we got the first show me question on the move. And just when it's safe to do so, could you put the rear dimister on for me, please? Brilliant. The meeting situation is just up ahead. There's a car looking to come out of a driveway and a parked car on the opposite side of the road. Considering the risk, I simply would have expected him to reduce speed. 
<coughs> Arrested it for biscuit. And then we're going to take the next road on the right, which is just by that post box. Yep, perfect. And then just after this right turn and a little bit further up the road, we're now doing the parallel park. When he goes to pull up, there's a learner driver in the vicinity. And then again, if you could just pull up on the left, just before that silver car. Yep. There's a learner driver just opposite us doing a reverse parallel park exercise themselves. And it's just as he goes to move away, he completely ignores them. That'll do. Now I'd like to do the reverse parallel park using this car here. Okay. I'd like to pull up next to it. Yeah. And then reverse the car back in, finishing off reasonably close to and parallel to the curb within two car lengths of space. Do you understand the two car lengths? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Overall, he does okay here. There's a slight discrepancy with observation and he finishes off just a little bit wider from the curb than he should do. As he goes to reverse, it's just his left blind spot that's missing. But overall, his observation is good and it's possible on the day the examiner might let it go because he does check it in the end. I just like to see him check it before he moves. And then towards the end, the observation is all on the left-hand side, apart from the occasional glance on the right shoulder. Although you are expected to do it in a flowing move, you can pause every now and then just to check the right-hand side. And then his finishing position, his nose is just sticking out just a little bit. Okay, yep. Brilliant, okay. Drive on when you're ready. The learner driver now opposite signals to move off and actually starts moving but Ben forces them to wait. This is a driver fault for move off safely. Sorry, I shouldn't have waved too. That's <laughs> no, okay. that's not allowed. <laughs> we'll have to do the salute over in one good. of your videos. It's all good. <laughs> At the end of this road here, turn left for me, please. This junction, Ben does fine, but just before we enter a double mini roundabout, he takes a little bit of a risk at a pedestrian crossing. Okay, so we're going to come up to a double mini roundabout. I'd like to turn right on the first one and then left on the second one. Okay. The issue here is the left hand side of this pedestrian crossing is completely blocked from view and he goes across it as if there's going to be nobody there. Now there isn't anybody there and this van shouldn't have stopped here, but he should have considered this and taken it more cautiously. This is a driver fault for awareness and planning. On the next right turn, he again cuts the corner ever so slightly. And then we're going to be taking the next road on the right here. So just here just on the there, right, yeah. Yeah, but that car's turning in. He can see into this junction. I'd have just preferred him to take it properly. And then just around this bend, we pull up on the left for the emergency stop exercise. So we're going to perform the emergency stop exercise. Okay. I'd like to bring the car to an immediate and abrupt halt under full control. My signal will be stop. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be making sure it's nice and safe behind us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Don't stop until I tell you to. Okay. Brilliant. Drive on when you're ready. On this stop, Ben uses about 75% of the capacity of the car. It should have been a bit more. And his move away from the side of the road is not as clean as it has been throughout this test. Thank you very much. I'll ask you to do that again. Drive on when you're ready. He also neglects to check his left blind spot before moving away. And then at the end of the road here, turn left. We're not far away from the end of this test, but there's just three things of note. One, the show me, tell me question, which is next. And then he makes two mistakes at the end. 
quite safe to do so. If you could open a side window for me, please. That will do. Although you did use the cruise control on numerous occasions, I could probably just say that that was your show me, tell me question. Yeah. And then what we'll do is we'll just take that next road on the right, just where that car just came just out. Just about to, yeah. And then there should be some bays there. We can just pull up on the left. Ben once again cuts this corner, and because the wall, the visibility is poor, we're on the and wrong side of the, the road, and if a vehicle was coming the other way, that again could have been quite dangerous. So that's a serious fault, again, for turning right. He then hits the curb as he pulls just up. Just to finish it off. Just to finish it off, let's just do that, shall we? Okay. All right, you can switch your engine off, and you can relax, okay? How's that? An experience? Yeah, it was good. No, I enjoyed it. It was really good. Even though I'm doing it every day with my job. You know what I mean? It's under these conditions. It's completely mm. different than what you see in everyday life. The one caveat you've got is you've done absolutely no training with an instructor and you've done all your learning based upon what you've seen on YouTube. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there, which is good. Yes? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we talk about your mirror work and stuff like that, it's pretty much clean. I think overall, I can see that you've really put a lot of hard effort into that, into, into sort of getting yourself into a strong position. Before you actually start your real training, pass or fail? Fail. Okay, that was quick. Fail. What, what do you think you fell for? I, I've got a real Achilles heel with following distances. I think following distances were pretty big for me. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a few following distances. Trying to there. keep trying to keep away from the car in front, trying to you know what I mean. I think it's coming up to roundabouts mm -hmm. and traffic lights. I would say is the main one. I would I would say yes, you do have an issue with following distances, but you're highlighting when you're coming up to junctions and stuff. It's not yeah. just when you're doing that actually. It's just in your sometimes in your general drive, you you follow a little bit too close okay. to the vehicle in front. But do you have any idea why you think that is? Um, and no, I don't mean I, specifically the following distances. Just being you know you're saying that. I mean, because obviously following distances is a byproduct of something. Yeah. It, it can be, or it can be that you're just not judging it. I just think I'm just following the car in front. I think I'm concentrating on what they're doing more than what I'm doing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Trying to go two steps ahead of what that person's going to be doing in the wrong way, if you get what I mean. Like mm -hmm. normally you would do is and you would think actually they might be turning right and we better slow down and mm. the tail back a bit. I feel like my reflexes are good enough to, if there was an emergency. You, you've but, got really good reflexes, but should we be relying on them? No. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I think is the issue. I mean, I'll put you out of your misery. It is a fail. Yeah. It is a fail, okay? Um, but one of the areas that's really letting you down is your awareness and planning. You're relying on your reflexes. And there's a few places where you've just sort of taken it where you, you just need to be careful. For example, we're coming onto a roundabout and there's a truck coming around the roundabout and you're away. You're just going, right? And he's still on the roundabout. He's going around the roundabout. He does actually go around the roundabout. But what if he didn't? Yeah. What if he suddenly decided he wanted to change position? For example, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Um, and some of the things where the, you, that's got you into trouble is where you've just sort of jumping into it. Coming just across back here as well, there's a pedestrian crossing. Our view's completely blocked of it to the last second. And you just go across it like it's not even there. That's, like, that's kind of awareness on planet. It's pedestrian crossings, there's nothing there. Yeah. There wasn't anything there. You yeah. were right, but it was just a little bit risky. Very front-footed drive. And on one side, we like that because do they want to see like a learner driver driving or do they want to see like a proper drive? For part three. Part two. Part two. Mm. Oh, they want to see a proper drive. They, they want, want to see, see a proper drive. But it's a balance. Like, so if we go into like our speed limits, a guideline or a target. Our speed limits, a guideline or a target. What do you think? A guideline. Oh, yeah. what? Yeah. They are a guideline. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to hit it. If we're driving on the motorway, I mean, you got up to speed really well. Uh, I liked it actually, you got up to speed really well. But when you're driving in some of the other roads, you're really like picking up speed, like turning corners, going, you're, you're a bit of an action man, aren't you? <laughs> Strongly recommend the commentary drive videos actually, and, and where you start to really read the road. Just before we go into this, what was the reason? Because I didn't do this at the beginning, and I, I don't know why I didn't do this. What was your reasoning to become a driving instructor? Why did you want to become a driving instructor? Um, well, part, like I say, part of my job is um, training, so which I really enjoyed the training side of things, so that was, that is one part of it, but the main part of it is because I have an autistic son and I've also got um, autism, kind of traits of autism myself. In our local, you know I mean, sign up sites and things like this on our local sites, they're crying out for dis disability driving instructors, so autism. More and more people coming on the list and asking, and it's the same people asking each week and each week. So I want to do this to be able to not only give to, to everybody, but you know, I mean, just to help out in the 
in the disability community, really. And I think that's a really noble reason to do that. And I think you would be very, very well placed to be able to perform that service, wouldn't you? Because you'd have a very good understanding yeah. of it. Yes? Yeah. Um, and I really admire that. So 100%, you need to focus yourself in the right way to get to the qualification that you need for that. And I do think you can do it. Let's talk about the reverse pay part, first of all, because I think you know what you did there. Yeah. You said you were done. And I wasn't. Yeah. I hadn't checked my lines. I hadn't yeah. checked my stuff. I, I was just like, I panicked a bit, I think. It was right but at the my beginning. Nerves. Right my nerves. My nerves were beginning. right open. As, as but... You know, I'm going to put down again here, rushing. Yeah. Is that a part of your personality? If I'm nervous, yes. I would say that I was very nervous at the start and what being able to rush and trying to... I'd, and towards the end, because you know the way, you know that the time's gone, we've done the sat nav, you know you're coming towards that kind of thing, you know what I mean? I think it's just under pressure. I, don't, I just think that I need to do things really quickly and really try and kind of show off and that's not the right way to say it but you know what I mean in, mm. in a way you know what I mean I'm trying to show my level of driving skill yes. as well as in the best way as I possibly can in the most action pat way possible I would say uh, <laughs> as you say well it's definitely exciting in places that's, yeah. that's for sure and I will give you some homework to go away with yeah. that will put you in good stead for when you start your actual real training with the parallel park control we're sort of in a funny position at the end, a little bit further back than probably we needed to be. Okay. It's again a little bit rushed, but it, it was it could have just been a little bit tighter. But it was it was a driver fault as opposed to a serious fault. And again, observation because you'd done most of it, you did all of that, and then everything was on this side after that. Um, again, I'm going to come back to rushing. Let's say you're doing the manoeuvre, and yeah. you've still got a flow because yeah. you're a driving instructor. If you pause the car for a second, what does that allow you to then do with your observations? To redo them, do them again, be able to check them again properly. Yeah. And if we go back to that exact uh, moment, we then went to move off. We had a learner drive on the right-hand side. Yeah. Your first thing is just go. Again, coming back to checking. rushing. And that guy kind of had his signal on before you did, but because you were there and you were going and you didn't have an L on your car, he very quickly decided he's going to wait for you. He was aware of you more than you were aware of yeah, them. Yeah, that's all the look. Turning right. Yeah. Now, I can only put one serious, but you've got two. Okay. It's the same junction. In fact, if I'd have got you to pull up over there where we started and didn't get you to turn right into this junction right here, then it wouldn't have happened twice. It would have only happened once. But you turn right on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. No one was there. I've made it a serious because our view is completely blocked. If somebody was coming the other way, yeah. that would then escalate to a dangerous straight away. Yeah. The awareness and planning, when we went off the A41 to go back onto the M1, you're in the right-hand lane. And it's written all over the place. You can see it. And yet we then, right at the last second, I know. Yeah. We, we cut across. You didn't interfere with anybody. No. But I gave you an awareness and planning because yeah. I felt like you really could have. You had loads of opportunities to move at least one lane. Yeah. But you didn't take it. Apex corner, which is that large roundabout. Mm -hmm. You straight lined it. Straight line means you went across a lane. I don't think you realised that you went across. Just after that, I said to you, do you have roundabouts like that in Stoke? Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah. You went across a lane without realising it. That's all it was, okay? And it's a serious because you didn't realise it until afterwards. I think you realised it when you went to exit. Yeah. You then went, oh, I think you made some noise. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But you realised at that point, but you didn't realise you changed lanes. And that would have been a serious fault for lane discipline. Didn't interfere with anybody, but you've got to be careful. Now, yeah. the, the last one on the motorway you've come down onto the m1 motorway and you've pulled out there's a vehicle coming up behind us who had to slow down for you you got onto the motorway and it seemed to me like you were immediately wanted to get up to speed yeah i've been watching too many speed videos <laughs> no and i mean speed, Keanu, what, no, your Reeves guys speed. no your like driving instructors right. and they are you need to get to 70 as soon as you possibly can get to 70 block changing if you can change gears yeah, but what takes priority over that what always takes priority oh, the, over that? the car that's in the Audi there, isn't it? The, What's the four-letter word beginning with R? That's a bit of a guessing game there, isn't it? Because I haven't done this with you. If I was training you, you'd, you'd be able to answer that straight away. Risk. Risk, yeah. Everything is risk. Mm. This, all the driving test, your part two, is all based upon risk. Yeah. So not driving appropriate speeds, right? If you're driving too slow for the traffic conditions, what are we doing to vehicles behind? Are holding them up. So it's important that we are getting up to yeah. speed in those circumstances. Yeah. But if 
we have to create risk in order to achieve it, are we, are we not being counterproductive? Correct. So what should we have done there? Like we come, we come down the slow, slowed off, she's waited, coming up come past, and then. So look, you've got one half of the equation. You need to bring the other half in. If you marry those two things together, yep. that progress drive, but with anticipation and planning, you'll be driving safely, confidently, in control, making yep. the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And I do think progress drive is one of the things that a lot of PDIs really struggle with. Following distances. Of course. That was my Kelly's heel from the start. That's what my wife said to me this morning. If there's, there's one three, thing you're going to fail on, that's going to be There's three to four there, and I could escalate that to a serious. In fact, I, I, I probably should. And the steering, right now at the end, hit the curb. Yes? <laughs> this has been Ben's part two mock. Uh, I really give him some love in the comments because, again, he's come to me, zero training, uh, and he's put himself out there and this is going to be a really important learning tool for all of you so please give him some love in the comments if you've got any value from this video hit that like button yeah subscribe if you like more content and i will see you in the next one thank you guys get well out <laughs>